150 days, 150 psalms, one verse from each psalm daily. Welcome to the place where you learn the Bible. I hope you're all doing well. Greetings to you in the master's name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Even today, we'll be meditating on Psalm 94. And uh, this is a national lament and the author is unknown. Uh, the Psalm 93 and Psalm 94, they have one small connection. For example, when you see Psalm 93, it begins by declaring that the Lord reigns. That's what we read, we read in Psalm 93, 1, the God reigns. And then, but, but Psalm 94, it begins uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, by declaring that the vengeance belongs to God. Vengeance belongs to God. So when God reigns, it is very important for us to understand that even uh, the vengeance belongs to God. In other words, God will take care of your situation. Whatever it is, we should, we should, we should always know that we shouldn't try to do things by ourselves. We shouldn't try to fight our own battles, but, le but we should let God do our battles for us. Now, um, after talking about saying, ask, talking about God, uh, uh, God's vengeance, asking God to rise up, shine forth in verse 1 and 2, uh, verse 3 to 7, it continues about the acts of the wicked. Uh, when you, uh, when we look, uh, when you look at verse, verse 4, it says, the wicked, they pour out their words arrogantly. Verse 5, they crush your people. Verse 6, they slay the widow, the stranger and murder the orphan. So, so, uh, it goes on to say, and then in verse 16, the psalmist asks a basic question uh, to everybody, to himself, to God, to everybody, who will stand up for me against the evil doers, who will take a stand for me against those who do wickedness. Now, many times when we go through some kind of situation, uh, some kind of negativity, we feel that it, it would be good if somebody could stand up for us. If somebody, somebody could talk, up, talk, talk, talk on our behalf. Somebody could act on our behalf. So it, it, it was, it was in such a same situation that here is the psalmist that is asking, uh, who will stand up for me? Who will take a stand for me against those who try to harm me? And after after asking such such after after asking this question in verse seventeen, uh, the psalmist answers himself. The psalmist gives an answer. What is the answer? If the Lord had not been by my side, my soul would have soon dwelt in the abode of the silence. If the Lord had not been by my side, if the Lord had been by my side, and then it goes on like like like, like this. Look at verse eighteen. Yeah, if uh, if I should say my foot has slipped, your loving kindness will hold me up. First, the Lord has been by my side. Second one, when I was about to slip, maybe because of the acts of the wicked, when I was about to slip, uh, the Lord held me up. The the loving kindness of God did help me up. And then in verse nineteen, the psalmist goes on to add. And that is our core verse. What does it say? When my anxious thoughts multiply within me, your consolation delights my soul. When anxiousness, when worries occupy my soul, when worries, when, uh, when, uh, when I struggle in my mind, when my heart suffers, when I go through that pain, the consolations, the, the the your consolations delight my soul you know uh, another another verse says your comforts delight my soul another another verse says um, uh, you calmed me down and you cheered me up and again and again there are three words that can that that that, that have been used is consolation comforts and renewed hope you renewed me. You comforted me. You 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 consoled me. You your consolations when thoughts multiply. When thoughts try to uh, try to torture me. When the when the, when the uncertainty try to harm me. There was just one thing that still sustained me. That is God was consoling me. How does God console us? How does God console? How does God comfort us? And I, I always believe he can comfort us through people. Uh, he can comfort us through the still small uh, whisper with a still small voice. And I also believe he will comfort us even through his word. It is very important for us to read his word, to take time to listen to him. To be in the fellowship that God wants you and me to be. And th these are the three ways by which God consoles us. That is what we read here. 
when people take their stand against me, if God had not been by my side, if God's loving kindness did not hold me together, if his consolations did not delight my soul, dearly beloved, every time some kind of anxious thoughts, nervousness builds, builds in you, all that you can do is, you can go back to the feet of God because it is only at God's feet, it is only in God's presence you will, you will be comforted, you will be consoled, you will be encouraged, you will be built back. Nowhere else, nowhere else. Let, let, let this thought drive you even today. And let this be a lesson for life. Yes, people who do evil, they will keep doing evil. But I need to know one thing. Number one, the vengeance belongs to the Lord. And how do I sustain myself on that day? By staying in the presence of God. Ponder over these lines. Every time when something happens to you, when, when something happens against you, unfavorable to you, go back to God. Because it is only in God's presence you will find peace, comfort, consolation, renewed hope and cheer. And cheer. Stay blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.